We are so excited today to welcome your wonderful moderators, John and Hope, to the stage. And our very special guest star today, Rose McIver. Well, why don't you just tell us about like how you started acting? I started acting, I guess it was the same. I did like ballet and um, some singing classes and I, my brother played soccer and we also happened to kind of work in um, local television. It was sort of something I did on school holidays and on the weekends. It's a very small place in New Zealand, a small industry. Yeah, New Zealand, by the way. <laughs> um, and I just kind of kept falling back into it over and over again and I kept getting work. So I, I, I pursued that through school and then when I finished high school I started taking it a little bit more seriously and um, working with the dramaturg and doing it for a living. When did you like really get bitten with the bug and decide that that was something that you wanted to do and do it more professionally and start like pursuing the actual craft of acting? Well, I think I realized that it was something that I loved doing and I worked part-time jobs at a fruit shop and I worked a part-time job at um, a children's playground like Chuck E. Cheese, and nice. that was that was the hardest. That was the hardest I've ever worked, I reckon. But um, <laughs> but I realised that acting was the thing that I did that didn't feel like work, and that apparently you could do um, as a job, and I didn't consider it a job. So I think more and more I started thinking about what skills I could acquire that would help serve that. Um, music and dance and movement and writing. I also write, which is a really useful thing, by the way. If you are waiting for the phone to ring for jobs and nothing's happening, uh, you can generate your own material. I'm a big fan of that. So I started pursuing that really at high school and, um, and then when I graduated high school, I started working with a particular woman back in New Zealand who is a big mentor and influence of mine. Uh, I saw in your bio too, you do a lot of short films. Yeah. And like here, like for the kids, we do a lot of short films so we can, you know, one, it's a, one, it's a great way to get the kids involved in making their own short mm -hmm. films and, you know, with, some of them are actually writing their own short films, which right. is really Who awesome. Who here is a writer? Writers? Oh, Hello. yeah. I like that a lot, okay. yeah. Absolutely. Can you talk about some of that, about the, the shorts that you've chosen to work with and do it? In yeah, your I think one of the main reasons that I like doing shorts is kind of tied into the reason that I like acting in general, and that's because you can live somebody else's existence for a brief moment of time. And when you commit to a TV series, you're playing one character often for years at a time. Whereas with short films, just for a weekend or for four days, or whatever it is, you can really step into this character. And um, it's kind of a greedy way of living. I like it. You get like five <laughs> lifetimes in one or many more sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think short films are a really great way of collaborating with friends as well. I often, even now, Jennifer Morrison, who plays um, Emma Swan on Once Upon a Time, directed her first short film just last month. And I worked on that with another actress called Karen Gillan. And it was great to be able to uh, like work with her material and help her develop her skill set as a director. I think she's a very talented actor and it's a nice way to collaborate with friends. So whether it's at high school or years down the track, um, I'm a big advocate for uh, co-op co teamwork, like making projects together. Yeah. That's awesome. How do you um, feed yourself as an artist to, you know, like, or what can we exp tell the kids about how to keep going with your art? How do you move your art forward? I think the best thing is, if, especially for those of you who are writers who want to generate your own material, if you hit any roadblocks or you just can't think of what it is that you want to create, think about what it is that you enjoy watching, or what you enjoy reading, and saturate your world with that. So watching films and television or going to local theatre is a wonderful way to connect with material that inspires you. And, um, and reading. I'm a big pusher for reading. I think it's a, it's a way of taking material in that we don't necessarily promote as much as we used to, and it's a really important way to develop your mind. And I was wondering um, how you handle not getting a role that you maybe really wanted, like when you go on an audition and you don't get it. That's a great question. Um, that's another thing. You have to love what you do and you also have to be okay with people saying no, because that just happens over and over again, and you just let that slide. You can't let that get the better of you, otherwise it makes auditioning quite miserable. But I think, Sometimes what's happened is I have not got a role that I've really, really cared about and then three weeks later something else has come through that has ended up being a much better fit. And I think you, my, my best friend, this girl Fleur, always says every decision is the right decision and I really like that. I think whatever's happening is happening. You can't resist it. You just go with it and keep doing what you do because you love it. 
and know that if you are tenacious enough and you stick at it and you have talent, it'll work out. And I'm wondering, what do you look at in directors that you find incredible and you, makes you want to work with them? Mm -hmm. What like special things do they do? Uh, I think, personally, I think um, somebody who is interested in constantly bringing it back to storytelling. That's why I started this job in the first place. I think I love listening to somebody tell a story where it's this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this is why it's important, or this is why it's relevant. And I think certain directors... Um, stray from that and they kind of can sometimes get a little bit involved in um, technicalities and various things that there is a definite market for that people are interested in but I really like looking at is this person telling it because it's a story that matters and should be shared and I think you can feel that when you watch a film when you see a play if you or television series especially actually where you can see somebody comes in and it's not their whole show, they're directing one particular episode out of maybe 13 or 22 episodes or something. And they really care about where the characters all started from, where they're going, and the little incremental steps it takes to get there. Um, so having their heart in, in the character storytelling is really important to me. Can you talk a little bit, like, how long did it take you to get to this point? And what kept you going? Yeah, uh, I think, especially right now, a lot of you are at high school? High school? High school and middle, yeah. Middle yeah. school, high school. Our high school starts at like 12. I think New Zealand high school is maybe different. Um, but yeah, it, at school, um, it can be incredibly frustrating when you have the, if you love storytelling and acting and, and you really want a platform to do these things and you haven't been able to yet or you're busy with other things or you haven't got the roles that you're after, Patience is the most useful thing to practice, um, but also finding your own little ways of ferreting in and making it, making it your own. Um, and I think, yeah, being tenacious, people will say no. And I've had that over and over and over again. When I first came out to LA, there was a good year, and I'd worked a lot in New Zealand for years. And I came out to LA and suddenly nobody knew who I was, nobody cared. Um, they weren't being won over by my auditions. And, it takes a long time to get to know another whole group of people and another whole network of filmmakers. And I think making, making sure that I was working on scene studies with friends in my own time and um, knew why I still did it and that I still loved it. Yeah. And going back to the fact, you know, if you're 20 and you're struggling in an audition room, thinking about coming to this camp and what you really loved and the costumes that you wore and the sketches that you performed and the songs that you sang and all those things and the reason why you love it in the first place you have to just hang on to that because if you can still find that pleasure in it you'll keep going and um, if you are doing it for the right reasons it's a matter of time I think. That's a beautiful place to end. I want to thank, let's give it, let's give a big round of applause <laughs> to Rose and to our fabulous host Hope. Way to go Hope. Um,